Dr. David Murren, Director General, um, NRC, Ocean Coastal and River Engineering Research Center in St. John's. David, to begin, could you please explain your organization? So the uh, National Research Council's Ocean, Coastal and River Engineering Research Institute and what it seeks to achieve in Newfoundland and Labrador or in St. John's more specifically. So I guess, first of all, I'd kind of like to start um, really by, by saying that our research center um, and what it delivers for Canada is, is very broad and very important. Um, and it's going to be increasingly more important in the coming years. Uh, so we're not just researchers that study water. Uh, we're also kind of studying its, its impact on our lives, how we can protect ourselves against it, and how we can use it to our advantage. So if you think of terms of, um, you know, think in terms of flooding and erosion, storms, waves, uh, infrastructure, uh, ice and that sort of thing, uh, the Arctic, uh, pollution, microplastics, that's kind of the world that we're, we're playing in. And the world is changing really quickly. Uh, the effects of climate change are drastic and far reaching, uh, particularly for our oceans and rivers. So our job is really to find a sustainable way forward. Um, and to help build a resilient marine environment for Canada. So uh, our researchers are, are leaders in studying ships, uh, so in the Canadian context, so that would mean ships and icebreakers. Uh, we make ships more efficient, uh, safer and quieter. And uh, we're world leaders in navigation in harsh environments, uh, and we're working at ways to improve future ship designs and offshore autonomy. Um, now that's a lot. Um, so in a nutshell, you could think of us as kind of Canada's research center of expertise in marine safety and performance. It's probably the easiest way to think about it. Um, we're, we're looking at the, the effects of ice and waves on ships and structures and shorelines, that sort of thing, and developing and evaluating tools and technologies for harsh marine environments. Um, we use numerical modeling tools, we used field investigations, uh, and we have these world-class uh, model test facilities. Um, and in terms of examples, uh, so we've tested the performance of every offshore platform in Canada in our facilities. And, uh, and we work closely with the Coast Guard, Department of National Defense, uh, Transport Canada, international companies, local SMEs. Um, and we're really here to make our offshore uh, safe. That's kind of what we're here for. We work with the fishing industry as well. And I, I, re I really foresee us working uh, on any technology uh, that needs to kind of brave Canada's, and especially Newfoundland and Labrador's, harsh marine environment. Of course, St. John's is a natural location for your uh, research institute, I suppose. What would you say are St. John's competitive advantages in general and the region uh, in the ocean economy, in the sort of ocean tech uh, field? Uh, and why did NRC choose uh, to establish its centers there? Understanding, of course, there's, a, there's some natural advantages. Yes, yeah, sure. That's a good question. So um, I guess Newfoundland and Labradorians, you know, we have an intimate relationship and I, and I guess a healthy respect for the ocean. And just about everything in our lives is affected by it. So whether it's, you know, fog or supply chain issues uh, and then, you know, the many people that earn their, their living from the ocean, it's kind of just a part of who we are. Um, but what's important is, is that um, there's an ecosystem that, that nurtures that. <clears throat> And this includes things like training. So our university has the best ocean engineering program in North America. Uh, the Marine Institute uh, is world renowned for education and training and applied research and, uh, and also industrial support for ocean industries. And then on top of the training, within probably a two minute drive of each other, we have this collection of the most comprehensive and leading edge ocean research facilities in the world. Um, and then most importantly, we have this emerging entrepreneurial spirit, I guess, in, in the community. Uh, and that community then has access to the best expertise in ocean research in the world in a lot of cases. Well, that's a perfect segue. I was going to ask about St. John's ocean tech uh, innovation ecosystem. Uh, and perhaps you could highlight what differentiates it from other ocean tech uh, ecosystems, because there are others, to be fair. So I kind of alluded to it earlier when I spoke of the ecosystem. Um, 
there has been a lot of ocean technology innovation in St. John's over the years. And so this was obviously propelled by the university and National Research Council being here. Um, but also importantly, um, there are R&D requirements mandated into the Atlantic Accord for any offshore uh, oil and gas platform. And so um, there was a consistent stream of research in uh, offshore uh, safety, offshore oil and gas for a number of years. With kind of new initiatives like the Ocean Supercluster and its, its focus on commercialization, we're starting to see, you know, companies and products emerge uh, from from some pretty great uh, innovative companies. Um, and I think what's important, though, is we have to keep in mind that it's a spectrum. So uh, it's very important to kind of nurture innovation right through training, early stage R&D and then commercialization. Um, and I think, again, what separates us from other jurisdictions is this strong foundation that is, has shaped our relationship with ocean technology and this this entire ecosystem of almost cradle to grave uh, type expertise. So is there an area um, in which you would say St. John's is particularly competitive? Perhaps you could be specific in terms of maybe a technology or a specific field where you say that's really St. John's is, 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 is renowned worldwide for that. So obviously, and uh, the things that are getting uh, a lot of media attention now, we hear about the great work that some some of our local companies are doing in remote sensing. Uh, and we also have have companies that kind of spun out of oil and gas and are now pivoting towards new markets. Um, we also have a number of companies that are working in more traditional fields like shipbuilding and fishing. Uh, but what they're doing is they're really moving that field forward by creating really innovative kind of niche areas of expertise. Um, but obviously anything to do with ice and icebergs, you know, we're world leaders in, in that. And that's come from uh, having to, to operate uh, a lot of these big oil and gas fields and other things in that environment. Uh, so because of that, we've also emerged uh, a, a really nice, a really nice set of companies and expertise in kind of simulation uh, and training and testing sensor development and, uh, and ocean observation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, shifting gears a little bit to the talent aspect of things, um, how available um, is uh, ocean tech talent in St. John's, in the region? Um, and, um, and, and what is being done to, I guess, attract, to train, to retain that talent as well in the city? Yeah, and that's a great question. Uh, fortunately, we have, we have great training schools. Uh, and, and a lot of people that have chosen to stay in Newfoundland and Labrador um, to apply their knowledge, I guess, and kind of pursue their dreams and raise their families. Um, there are a lot of advantages uh, to living in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, and in a lot of ways, that is one of our competitive, competitive advantages. Um, I don't think we can rely on that, though. So we also have to make sure that we, we continue to provide an, an environment where where people have access to great facilities, great minds, and great opportunities. And again, this really comes down to this whole ecosystem we talked about. Uh, someone not from here might not exactly understand how all these pieces fit together. And sometimes um, I feel that we don't do a great job in, in working together to show that we're, we're so much greater than the sum of our parts. So we need to, to really work collaboratively to show this. So I think the, the university, the NRC, local R&D community, we really need to position ourselves as an accessible kind of support system to help drive that innovation. Well, I was going to ask, how do you see the sector evolving in, in the coming years, uh, considering everything you have shared with, uh, with us? And perhaps some of it will be aspirational and, and require, you know, the puzzle pieces to be, um, to be, to be well uh, aligned, let's say. Um, but what, what, do you, what do you see on your horizon uh, from your vantage point? The big thing that we're hearing now, and it seems to be a lot of concern with, is obviously the green side of things. Uh, so making you know making ships greener for sure, uh, uh, more efficient in, in general. Um, the digitization piece, though, uh, is really starting to to emerge, and and that, I don't just mean digitizing ships. I mean uh, even digitizing ports and kind of looking at intermodal transportation and how that works and how uh, you work out the logistics of, of container ships when they come to, into a port and how does that connect then with uh, 
you know, the, the um, trucking industry and these sorts of things. So it's an integration of all of these industries, um, but it can only really happen through digitization. Um, and then there's the idea of, you know, remote operations. So, or autonomous operations. And that's kind of the, you know, it's not next year, but it's, it's things that we're working on. So just like you've seen you know, Google cars and that sort of thing, uh, we're really starting to explore the idea of autonomous ships and uh, how do they look? How do they work? How do they interact with ports and that sort of thing? Um, and then as you look uh, for at offshore industries, trying to get as many people uh from the offshore back to, sh to shore as possible. So do you, do you have control centers where you're operating a lot of these uh, facilities remotely? And so, so that's a lot of the questions that we're tackling now. And that's where the sector is going. We have very knowledgeable, educated workforce uh, with world leading uh, expertise. Um, and I think that can be extended to other industries as well. So we've, we've done it in oil and gas. We've been successful. And um, we have to show, though, that we're flexible in new ways of operating. So again, if you think about remote operations and digitization, how does all that, that get approved? And how does, how does this become an, an interesting place for someone to, to come and try something different? Uh, maybe we can be a, you know, a pilot or the first in the world at doing some of these things, these things, but it'll come down to how flexible we are. Um, and again, more importantly, um, you know, first we show that we're flexible, but also that we have an entire ecosystem from a talent development point of view, right up to expertise, to facilities, to innovation. And, and I guess the supporting structure behind it that, that makes everything work. I, I think we have a leg up on the rest of the world in terms of this ecosystem. So it's really important for us to promote it.